All right, I do this every year. I break down each team and kind of go throw by throw outside the screens and stuff and just kind of walk through what they did offensively, give you kind of an aftermath of the season and the Super Bowl. And so let's dive in to the Chiefs here, the first half of the Chiefs coming out and San Francisco doing what we expect them to do. They love to play the shell coverage. One, two, three defenders underneath. Kind of how they like to play and really the base of their defense, okay? Kansas City, I talked about this uh, all week. Is there a four-strong team? One, two, three, four. They do it more than anybody in the league to attack these two underneath defenders to the right-hand side. So it's exactly what they do here. Post, wheel, trying to get the corner. This is what they want to do. They want to get Travis Kelsey on the corner. Then it's a chip and a flat over here by the back, okay? And so you see how it plays out. We get exactly what we want. We clear out the corner with the post, okay? So we get this guy to carry. And what we're really trying to do is, is isolate this guy and this guy. And it really starts with the flat defender, okay? So the guy that I've circled right here is what do you want to do? Do you want to come down hard on the flat or do you want to chase the wheel? Okay, so really it should become a high low there. And, and Patrick, you know, has a tendency at times, and especially in this game, like to move. He wants to move before he has to. Now, Fred Warner is a great defender. He sees this corner route coming by Travis Kelsey, which is, you know, really what Patrick Mahomes would like to hit here. Uh, but he sees him coming. He covers it extremely well. This ball should be out to the flat right here. And, you know, you just go back and you just go, okay, Patrick, what? No need to move. No need to move. Just read it out. You get this guy to clear. Okay. Come to this next defender. See if he chases the wheel. And if he does, just work your high low. Hit your back right out in front here. Now he ends up getting there late. But by the time you get there late, now everybody's kind of rallying over there. And I'm not saying he would have got the first down long yardage situation anyways. But just playing the game. You know, seeing what's in front of you. And I felt like Patrick early in this game um, wasn't seeing things like he normally does, all right? We get into uh, a situation here where San Francisco, you know, they go to man-to-man, -man. you put your back out here, uh, Dre Greenlaw goes with them, you know they're gonna play man-to-man. -man. What they like to do is not be a big pressure team, so they're gonna play what we call one cop. So we call it cops and robbers, okay? So if it's a linebacker that's gonna be the free player, we call it a cop. If it was a safety dropping down here to be the free player and read the middle of the field, we would call that a robber. Okay, so it's cop. So it's man-to-man -man across the board. And then we have this cop defender who's free and Fred's so good at reading the eyes of the quarterback here. And so they end up running double pivots, which is a hard thing against this man cop because what it means is with this guy sitting in the middle, normally, your defenders, you see right there on Rasheed Rice, they're going to play outside leverage. You can play outside leverage. So if you start in and then bounce back to the outside, they should be playing outside leverage because everything inside is fed to Fred Warner. So not a great play call here based on the defense. The only thing I would say is a lot of times what you're trying to do is you're trying to work this defender or you're trying to find the off coverage. So right here, MVS comes back behind with an in route, um, you know, against soft coverage, maybe that's the throw you make against this one cop because you don't really have anything. Or the other thing that I always like to do is, even if you're running these pivots, is to put something outside of it like a comeback. Okay, so now we've got this particular concept. So if you get some sort of zone, you can hide low inside. If you get the right kind of man coverage, you can work one of the pivots, but if you don't get what you want inside, you can recover right back out here to this comeback. You're not going to do it at the top with a running back, but with the wide receiver. And so now it gives you an outside throw against one-on-one -on -one coverage, against man-to-man -man coverage if you don't like what's happening inside. And so uh, just some a little change-up that I would do over there. They run a locked little hitch over there that's not really going to give you much of anything. It doesn't really time up with what's going on. It can get in the way of this uh, pivot route that's bouncing outside. So not really sure 
why you add that on there, but obviously it leads to a sack early in the game for KC. Okay, now they caught, find themselves in third and long again. And you guys hear me talk about this all the time. So they're going to run a deep curl, something to the middle, a deep curl over here. Okay, so anytime you're running a curl route, you want uh, somebody running to the flat. Okay, why is that, Kurt? Because curl routes are designed to basically isolate an outside linebacker. Okay, so if we're going to run a curl, do you want to stay inside and take away the curl? If so, we're going to throw the flat. If you don't want to stay inside and you want to match to the flat because that's your responsibility, then we're going to wrap the curl back to the inside of you. So we need that stretch. We need that kind of what I call width stretch. So I want to stretch the width of the outside linebacker. I want him to either lose leverage wide or have to cover wide so I can come back uh, inside of him. Okay. So one of the biggest issues I see around the league all the time is you get in a third yard, third and long yardage situation, and you want to chip your extra guys. I get it. We're going to have to hold the ball longer. We're going to chip those guys to give our quarterback more time. The only problem with that when you have curls is that the chip guy never gets out here to stretch the width of this guy. And so that's where we get a problem. So we're trying to hit a curl route, but the concept doesn't connect to the curl route. We leave a defender sitting right there in the lane. So just watch up at the top, okay? We want to hit this, and we should be able to hit that. If we get Jarek McKinnon right here to go to the flat right now, right now, I'm guessing this defender probably matches to him and we have a throw. But because we chip, we never get the stretch. We don't get out there fast enough to grab the attention of their guys. And now Patrick's got to run the football. Okay, so now I would probably go down here to the short side uh, because you already have more width here to the short side than you do to the wide side. Greenlaw on the back side holds inside, right? So he still holds inside here. So this is probably your throw, probably doesn't get the first down, but not the point of, of what I'm trying to say is if you're going to run the curls then you got to have a complementary underneath concept if you honestly think you're going to get it right this body stays there and that's what prevents uh patrick mahomes from throwing it and so don't run curls if you want to chip then stay outside if you want to chip just run the comeback run a comeback and a hook hook and a comeback so now if I want to hold these guys inside, which I'm going to do with the chip, now there's nobody underneath to come back to the outside, and I'm playing with my chip and my concept to benefit me based on what I'm probably going to lead the defenders to do based on what I'm doing from a protection standpoint. Details. And again, it's all over the league. So this isn't just a Chiefs thing. But it's all over the league. Is, is teams do that all the time, and they chip because it's third and long, so we got to chip. But they don't complement the chips with a concept on the back end to help their quarterback out. All right? Here's another thing that's very interesting to me with the Chiefs is, especially these two guys, they're so good at being able to adjust to what they see in front of them. So this is supposed to be a corner route by Travis Kelsey. And he reads that there's a defender out there, so he settles in the hole. Now in this game, I felt like there was way too much of that going on with their receivers. Now, maybe it's how they teach it and whatever, and they're on the same page, but to me it makes it really, really hard on a quarterback to try to read the defenders and what they're doing and read out in front of the routes and then you come back to throw something and all of a sudden your receiver's stopping so we'll talk about that throughout this okay so here you see it okay travis comes out of this he feels color out there so he's going to settle in the hole now everybody drops there patrick does a great job of dumping it underneath um, and reading that flat defender good read right here okay i'm going to talk about details again Okay, this is one detail that frustrates me with the Chiefs. Okay, so what they're running is flat, corner, and then what we call, what I call a pylon. I don't know if that's what they call it. I don't know what they're, they're trying to do. But when you do this, you want three distinct levels 
on the field. So that means your outside receiver. We was, used to always tell them, you need to run to the back pylon. Run a high angle to the back pylon. Your job is to take this corner with you so we can get a high low with the corner and the flat. Now, if that corner wants to settle, we can throw you a touchdown over the top. But understand, we're running a play to get somebody open. We're not running a play to get everybody open. So too often, the Chiefs do this. They run this pylon, and then this guy comes out of it and goes, oh, this guy's sitting high on me. So I flatten it off underneath him, and now we get all these bodies in the same area, okay? So watch. Look look how we he, he kind of stops and wants to flatten here. There's no way to make both of these throws anyways. So what I need you to do, Rashi, is don't worry about it. Go here and go to the back pylon. No matter what happens, keep running to the back pylon and carry that guy with you. If he wants to settle outside of you, we'll take the high throw, but we don't need you running a 25-yard corner route. Little details that can, that can separate everything. And now we know they're really good and they make up for it, but I just think it's things that can help um, the Chiefs. Okay, so here we're going to run a play uh, that I call Horner. Okay, so I, I have a play in my playbook called Horn, which is just a hitch and a corner. Okay, and so Horner for me is we're going to do the same thing and we're going to fake the corner and then come back to the post. So it's a double move. We're going to roll Patrick Mahomes. We're going to try to get everybody going that direction. Then we're going to throw the post back to the other side. The other thing they do with this is they bring... Travis Kelsey on the corner route. They'd love to run it. So it's going to be here. We're going to come back. What we really should be doing as a, as a quarterback is reading the backside deep defender. If he stays down on Travis Kelsey, we're hoping to beat the front side defender and throw the post. If he goes bailing back to the post, now we're going to have Pacheco coming over here and we're going to have a high low uh, to that side. Okay. So as you see this, I want you to look at the backside defender, Gibson, and look what he does. Patrick really needs to see this. I mean, this should be an interception right here. Now, maybe they're just saying, hey, this guy can't play the ball. We know that ahead of time. You're just taking a shot, so throw it. But that safety's in great position. Look, his eyes aren't even looking at Patrick Mahomes. He's turning and running back to the post. Flat defender here comes down on the flat. Here's where the throw should be. It should be huge. And you even see Travis Kelsey come out and kind of throw his hands up like, oh my gosh, throw it to me. What are we doing? Yet... They get lucky on this one. I say lucky, whatever. They make a great play, throw and catch. But look at Gibson. Like, find the football. That should be another interception right here. And you see Travis Kelsey. I mean, there's nobody within 20 yards of him. That's probably where the football should go. But they make it work. They get a big play. And 49ers are fortunate that the next play becomes the fumble by Pacheco. And no harm, no foul, uh, even though... Not a great decision to me. And again, Patrick, early in this game, I didn't feel like he was seeing things as well and kind of just, um, you know, kind of kind of going through and playing a little bit too fast. Okay, so here's another example of, so they're going to come back and they're going to run this pylon again and then they're going to try to run it over connected to it. So it's, it's kind of that flood concept over to this side, okay? And so, again... MVS here, like, wh where are you going? Wh where are you going at this point? I, I get it. They probably have you covered. But just run and clear it out. Just do your job, and because we can't make this throw. We're never going to make this throw. The possibility we have on this play as a quarterback is if you run in here and then just take the high angle and this corner stays outside of you, not that we're always going to throw it, but at least we have a shot to throw it high. As soon as you start to flatten, you take yourself right into the corner and we no longer have a possibility of leverage or angle to throw it. You take a high angle, I could drop it right on top of you and it's still a 50-50 ball, but, but I can get it in a position where it's not thrown right at the corner. As soon as you flatten it off, as MVS does here, right there, like, where am I throwing this now? Like, now I'm dead. So you, you, you're you acting like you're going to try to get yourself open by flattening underneath the guy. All you do is cover yourself more. And when you slow down, it allows this guy to slow down and kind of get in the way of this over route. Okay? So 
back to the over route. So here's what I was talking about, about these guys reading it. So Rasheed Rice is coming over here and he's going to run an over route. So we're trying to get the levels over here to this side. And then watch Rasheed Rice right here. He stops right there. Now, I get it. He is open. But if I'm Patrick Mahomes, my eyes are over here. I am reading what's happening on this side of the field. So I have no idea what you're doing and, and why you're stopping it or that you're going to stop. So if I get all these guys to clear out here, I'm expecting you to come over and run the over. Now, maybe he does if those guys clear out, but he stops here in the middle of the field. He's open, but it doesn't help the quarterback. Okay, and here's another one where I feel like Patrick's playing fast. Okay, so we get this to clear out. You should be waiting for this over. We get a little chip here, and then he sits down and he goes to the flat. Really like this play concept, but watch Patrick come out quickly. And right there, see how he's pumping? He's pumping like, I'm assuming he wants to throw it to Travis right here. But Travis isn't even looking yet. And so, again, you see just kind of how fast he was playing early, but... Uh, just, you know, there's some things going on around him that, um, you know, that, that I just questioned some of the details. Um, and I think it can lead to indecision when you've got uh, a lot of guys changing their routes or trying to adapt their routes to what they see instead of allowing the quarterback to dictate where he goes based on what he sees. Okay. So, Here's another one we're going to chip on third down. And again, don't mind it here because they're basically running something to the outside here like bench routes. Okay, now this is another one that's interesting to me because I just want you to watch Patrick Mahomes. Okay, he drops back and look, see that big hitch right there? So watch it again. He comes back, his eyes are left. Okay, his eyes are left. And then he takes this big hitch. Okay, so as I was watching this, it's interesting because Watson runs what we call kind of a seven or an out and up. So it's like he's running a seven pump, but then he turns it into a comeback here at the top, okay? So here's what I think happened on this play. Now, I don't know the answer to this, but based on the body language of Patrick Mahomes, what I think is happening is they're supposed to run a seven pump. I think Watson's supposed to run a seven pump. Fake it out, run the go. Patrick is trying to work this free safety here. Look left, look left, look left. So I get a one-on-one -on, -one on the backside shot. And the reason I say that is because of the body language. You don't take this big hitch and tip your shoulders like that if you're going to throw an out route or a comeback to the outside. You're tipping your shoulders and hitching like that because you're going to let this ball go and wing it down the field. And I think he gets to this point and realize Watson is adjusting his route and he gets caught in between and can't make the throw. And, you know, again, I understand. Let's try to be right every time. Let's run a seven pump, and then if the corner's high, turn it into a comeback. All of that stuff sounds great because we're giving these guys options to win no matter what they see. What you don't understand is how hard it is on this guy when you do that. He's looking and holding everything left. He's not worried about what the corner's doing on the backside. He's saying, I got one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to take a shot back there. Let me do whatever I have to do before that, which is look left, hold the safety left. I'm not coming back and reading the corner and going, oh, is he playing high? Is he playing low? Are we going to win? I don't have time to do that. I got to work these safeties to make sure I get the one-on-one, -on -one, and then it ends up hurting you at the end of the day. So this is kind of what I, I mentioned about just – when I watch this offense sometimes, I just feel like they're trying to do too much with all of their guys. And sometimes it works and it's beautiful. And other times it just leads to chaos. And they could be, again, could be so much better because number 15 is so good. Let him read it and dictate where to go with the football instead of allowing your receivers and, and these option routes to dictate where you're trying to go with the football. All right, so concept here, looks like we're running an out. Maybe this turns into a return, a corner route there. And then from there, we're going to run through. We're going to run the in, and we're going to get here on the hook. Okay, so um, to me, you kind of read this side over here. 
if you get the corner off and maybe you can take Travis Kelsey on the out. Uh, you get man-to-man -man coverage now. You get two out beaters, but you get a drop zone kind of like they have here, dropping the safety down. It really is all dictated by this corner. This corner stays down at all, okay? I want to kind of work up over the top or work back to this high-low on this side, okay? So come out, we read the corner, okay? The corner kind of squats right there. Safety holds in position here. I would love to see MVS attack the other side of this safety and keep it high. That might give you a shot because both of these guys on the back side are down. But regardless, you don't really like the left side. I'm cool with just coming back here and reading the high-low right here, which is what Patrick does. Nice read. Fred Warner, discipline, holding in there to take away the end. Nothing there. Those guys drop. Drop it right underneath. But you see, idea, high-low. Reading Fred Warner, he drops, throw it underneath. He comes down, we throw it over the top to Rice. But nice little completion right there. Okay, seen this motion uh, a number of times by them. They're gonna motion down, and then they're gonna run a pivot with Rice. It's one of their favorite routes where they put MVS. Looks like he's gonna lean and go across the field. He runs the high corner. Watson's going to come back. Looks like he's going to run an over, and then he comes back. So it's back to that flood concept that, um, that we've seen a number of times. I thought this was interesting by the 49ers. Uh, normally, Fred Warner is the middle linebacker. When Travis Kelsey was on the backside by himself, they put Fred Warner over on top of him. Said, hey, it, you know, sometimes they went to zone, and Fred would just drop outside and play zone to the outside. Other times they would go man, and they'd have their best cover guy uh, on – Travis Kelsey, so it was kind of a neat little adjustment, although it puts other people out of position because Fred's used to kind of manning the middle, but just something to pay attention to. So as we go here, uh, we get a two-man look, and there's just really nothing, nothing going on here because outside breaking route, outside leverage. Outside breaking route, outside leverage. This is our one possibility right here. Um, but again, this, this one to me is, is always a, a tough play because really the way I look at this is if you've got a pivot here, that really needs to be your first read where they're really trying to get this deep one as their first read. So it kind of messes up timing wise with the quarterback. So if you read underneath first, you got a shot right there, shot right there. Now, Rasheed Rice slips coming out of it, but you could get the ball on him right there and make him make a play for you, uh, but this becomes one of those situations where not great anywhere. And here's another example. I just want you to watch Watson here as he's coming out on his corner route. Watch what he does. Oh, no leverage. I'm going to stop. But notice what that does. Stop and look who's coming on the backside. Travis Kelsey is coming on an in on the backside. So Watson stops. He covers up Travis Kelsey if... Now, Patrick Mahomes didn't go there, but if I lose leverage, lose leverage to the outside, I want to come back to the inside breaking route and Travis Kelsey on the backside. So that's something that, Tra uh, that Patrick Mahomes could have easily done here. But Watson, again, hey, I'm going to get myself open. I'm going to stop and I'm going to cover up Travis Kelsey right here. Now, it all works out because Watson is actually the one that catches this off the scramble and gets them the first down. And so we're all excited and we're all happy about what's going on. But, you know, that's the kind of stuff that, yeah, it works out sometimes, but you're getting in the way of other stuff. You're making it hard on your quarterback because you're just trying to get yourself open every time. Run the route. Stay disciplined. Let the route get somebody open for us instead of me feeling like I've got to create myself or, or get myself open every single time we're running a route. All right, so a little motion right here. Always love empty against, uh, you know, this 49er team. So they're going to pretend like they're motioning into the backfield and they're going to stop and they're going to run him on a swing route and a little stick underneath here. So you see, stop right there. Now, I thought he could have put the ball on Pacheco right here if he wanted to. I mean, we've got almost 10 yards of space between these two. Force this guy who was in for Dre Greenlaw to make the tackle in space right here. But 
I'm cool with this because I, I understand what they're trying to do. They're going to run this deep over here. So we're trying to clamp, trying to get this guy to come down, and then trying to get this over, over the top. So you could take that right now, but understand on this one, they're trying to get this over. Ah, ball's just a little bit behind Watson. Would have been a tough catch. Possibly could have caught it, but, but not easy. And here's another example. So you get the tight end. I think this is gray here. Starting out on a pivot. And then watch how he comes back to the middle of the field because he's not open. Okay, he comes back. Now, you know, maybe it's because he feels the step up. But notice what he does. When he comes back inside, what happens? He brings bodies back into Rasheed Rice, who's coming to this side. Just do your job. If you're supposed to go outside, go outside and clear the middle out and let Rasheed Rice catch the football instead of trying to get yourself back open again. As you can tell, frustrates me as a quarterback because I want to see what the defense is doing and then allow me to work through my progressions off of the defense. And if you have a good play, hey, if that guy wants to come down and cover you to the outside, we should have something that comes back into that area to fill that void and that's what makes a good play. Okay, so here's kind of a similar type play. Now we got Patrick Mahomes, I mean, Travis Kelsey over here. We just run the swing out of here and this time he gives it to uh, the back about the same distance as the last one. That's why I said could have given it to him on the last one, but you realize this is a shorter concept. He's not trying to draw these guys down and throw it over the top. So he's just going to kick it to Pacheco right here and let him go one-on-one. -on -one. They're running a play that we call hinge, which is kind of a hitch to the outside, uh, a little hook on the inside, and then an in right behind it. So he could have had some of those quick throws to the front side if he wanted to, but just kick it out there. I like it. You got space. Go get what you can. Set yourself up for a short yardage on third. So here they come back with the same play again. You see Fred Warner over here. So it looks like maybe man to man. They're gonna run the hook. They're gonna run the swing, basically the same exact play. This time they go to zone. So not always man out here. Fred Warner's going to pop. So just watch the bottom here. He's gonna pop outside, do a nice job of covering it, and they're basically playing cover two back behind it. Normally, this guy in here is gonna be Fred Warner. They switched it up, I think, to mess with KC. Are we in man-to-man -man coverage? Because Fred Warner is out there, and then they roll back to cover two, okay? With cover two, little things, like little details, okay? So this is cover two. Now, is it two-man? You know, because it looks like they're trying to make it like two-man, okay? Man there, this guy's got the back, but, Based on what everybody else does, it looks like zone coverage to me. But they could be doing something where it's zone over here and man on the other side. But you watch these guys ultimately pass this off. And these are just the little things. Okay, we get a little chase by this nickel on MVS who's going out here to try to set a rub for Rasheed Rice. And that's all it takes is that little chase by this lot right there. Right, you see how he looks like he's dropping back to zone, like jamming him and then dropping back to zone? Just hold in your zone. If this guy's going outside, let him go outside. You've got a guy waiting there. And just hold in your zone and wait for somebody to come back to you. That little chase right there outside allows Rice to squeeze back underneath. Boom, get the completion, move the chains when we were really defensively in position to stop that. Good thing is no harm, no foul. They got it on third down. They kicked the field goal, but they don't end up scoring on this play or on this drive. Uh, I like this. You get down here. I talked about this last week, and they love to go to a two shell, and they love to put uh, Fred Warner in kind of the Tampa position where he's really responsible for taking anything deep down the middle. And so to high-low him is the way to go down here. They do just that. They high-low him. They get him to carry just a little bit with Kelsey. So, boom, we replace right behind it with Rasheed Rice, really good play concept. It's a play concept that I call Poppy. And so it's here, widen a little bit, take the middle, replace with a hook, replace with the hook. So now we're working three guys on these two inside defenders right here. Uh, reading inside first, the Mike linebacker, he carries, then we read this guy, he squeezes, work to the outside guy. He holds in his outside position like this, 
boom, hit the inside guy, and we're rocking and rolling. Ah, they got themselves here. It's third and five. Uh, got like 30 seconds on the clock. And so we got plenty of time. So it's third and five. They get man to man. Last week, uh, actually last year in the Super Bowl and last week in the AFC Championship game or two weeks ago, they ran Travis Kelsey because he loves to run these choice routes. Push up five yards, break outside. But they ran him on what I call a chug, a choice and go. So they lean him outside and then they turn it into a go route over here. Okay, so they hit this for a touchdown against Kyle Hamilton in the championship game. But just look right there. If they just run a choice route right here, kind of overthink this. If they just run a choice route right here, uh, they're going to get this. I don't know if he scores, but that sets him up for a first down. You see the first down marker right there, and they get at least one, maybe two more shots at the end zone. But I get it. Let's go and see if we can get him aggressive. We can get that double move. Then they're trying to run the rub here, and they get Rasheed Rice underneath it so they get best of both worlds a double move by travis kelsey and then the shallow by rasheed rice which they love to run down in the red zone fred warner so it's good coverage on the back war back uh, fred warner messes this all up because he goes and jams watson who's trying to set a rub for rasheed rice rasheed rice gets no rub he can't get through there he goes up over the top patrick mahomes has nowhere to go with the football they get him off here and hold him to a field goal so that's the first half right not clean across the board, wasn't pretty, thought Patrick was playing fast, was missing some opportunities. Details I thought were sloppy with them offensively in terms of everybody trying to do too much in this first half instead of just settling in and playing football.